welcome back everyone. Just wanted to do just a quick discussion on the, uh, the chuck regrinding project um, and thank everybody who watched and commented. There was great, great comments there. Um, and before we get into the discussion, where we left off, we had flipped two of the jaws around and we found that we had a, a, a dramatic, dramatic improvement in the amount of runout that we were seeing on our on our test sample. So let me uh, show you guys my uh, my results on that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, we had quite a go around with this. I am no math expert at all. <laughs> so I tried to figure out. You now we've got four um, slots uh, in in the chuck and and four different jaws. How many different combinations or actually not combinations but how many more how many different configurations can you put them in and I, I went online and and uh, tried to use some uh, uh, combination calculators actually I think it's it's not a combination it's a permutation and it told me that I have 24 <laughs> but I started writing them down in different sequences, the, the top row is the is the slot number, and the second row is the numbered jaws. So I, I you know, I started writing them down in different orders of sequence, and I got to eleven, and then I, my brain started hurting. <laughs> I didn't go any farther, but then I, I ran the the uh, the runout test as we did in the last video with those different combinations of flipping and flopping the jaws around. Most of them were like in this range, but then a couple of them were much better. These two here, these two combinations were the best. So I'm going to go with this one here. So it's, uh, you know, uh, slot numbers one through four. The jaws are going to be three, four, two, one. So I'm going to have to renumber those when we're all done so they match the slot numbers. But um, Kind of interesting. None of them are perfect, but this one was definitely better. We got it down to a three thousandths uh, run out as we swept along that uh, length of shafting that we had. I forget how long it was. I think it was about maybe four inches between the two readings. Yeah. So, anyways, um, that was an interesting finding. We're definitely going to be regrinding the jaws, but but not in this video. We'll do that in the next one. Okay, yeah, so it, it definitely made a difference on how we orientated the, uh, the jaws when we were taking our readings. And that's probably more so on, you know, the fact that this is just a, a low-end imported chuck. Um, I would think on a high-quality one it wouldn't be as, as dramatic. Uh, so anyways, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the, uh, the comments in the video. Um, so first one to address, um, uh, you spent more time and money fixing that hunk of junk chuck than what it's worth or what you paid for it. And 100%, I agree fully on that. Um, this chuck came with a lathe, so I really didn't, I mean, I bought it because it was part of the purchase, but I didn't buy it separately. Um, but, I mean, this is something I want to learn how to do. and. If you need something to practice on, what better than a screwed up <laughs> import chuck that if you make a mistake, there's no real loss. You know, I'm not any worse off than when I started. So it's a great uh, uh, work piece to, to learn on. Uh, so, you know, that's my goal on this. Yeah, I could probably could have bought two <laughs> high quality chucks for what I've got in this. Uh, in, in time and, and some added tooling that I had to buy and so forth. So, yeah, I agree, 100%. Yeah. Okay, uh, there were quite a few comments on the cross slide. Um, cross slide should run slightly inwards, giving you a concave uh, effect when facing off. Um, I think your cross slide is giving you a concave reading, yeah. Uh, Lays are supposed to face slightly concave. Okay, it would be interesting to see where your indicator would end up if you kept moving across. Okay, I did do a test trying to go all the way across, and let's uh, we'll jump over to a, to a, a quick video clip of me doing that. 
uh, one of the issues or one of the challenges, not an issue, was the, uh, the cross slide only has about seven inches, maybe six and a half inches of travel, total travel, and our, our chuck face is eight inches across. So we were a little short on travel, so I kind of split the difference. But let's go ahead and take a look at that video and we'll come right back. Okay. And I did, uh, I did check the um, cross slide. There's no slop at all to give. It's pretty, pretty tight. All right, so here we go. So there's some roughness on the surface, so we're going to get some needle bounce. So as we go across, the average is going down. Okay, and as we get to the inside here, we're about a half a thousandth low. Okay, and let's uh, go on across to the other side. This side up so the average is still maybe just a hair under half a thousandths low but as we continue it starts to come back up and we get to the end here yeah pretty much where we started so it's you know, it's concave or dished in or, or sloped in. Um, so it's not the it's not the uh, cross slide running off. It's 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 in the chuck, and I think that's by design. Okay, and then the other um, uh, several people mentioned that I checked the headstock alignment before doing the work, and oops, no, I didn't. <laughs> so. Um, uh, I have checked it since then, um, but more so what I found is as I was starting to, to check the headstock alignment, which I'm not an expert at doing, and I did take a few video clips, so we'll take a look at those. Um, I noticed that we were out a little bit. Um, not The vertical plane seemed okay, but the horizontal plane was a little bit out. I don't remember exactly how much, no more than two thousandths max. So then I said, whoa, wait a minute, you better check your level first, make sure the machine is still level. And I spent quite a bit of time leveling this lathe when I first set it up here, but I did not have a precision level at the time. So I, now I have a precision level. I've had it for a while, but I just, you know, I needed some motivation and, and this was it. So I spent about two hours um, re-leveling uh, the, the entire machine. <clears throat> and it's got it's got eight adjusting feet, so it took quite a while, and it's amazing the difference between even a good quality standard level and a precision level. It is night and day. So uh, yeah, so we I got it all dialed in, and then I went back and rechecked the headstock alignment, and we'll you know, like I say we'll look at a video clip. But anyways, it's it's very good right now, so I'm very happy with that. Let's go take a look at that video. Checking the vertical plane with a piece of chrome bar. Okay, that's one thou over, let's just call it five inches. And it's going uphill, which I think is okay. Because when you have, when you have a heavy work piece in there, it's going to try to push the... Uh, spindle down a little bit and I'm and I know this piece of chrome bar is, is very straight all right let's try the horizontal plane with the same piece of chrome bar oops sorry bumping the camera start over that's not quite a thou, let's just call it a thou, um, over the same distance, five inches. See if it repeats. That's not too bad. I got a piece of 1045 in here. 
without the tail stock. I'm just going to take a light skim cut with some high speed steel and then we'll see if we're getting any kind of a taper. Okay, so I took a skim cut. I was chasing some chatter in here, so I'm not going to measure that part. I had to reposition the tool a couple of times to get out of that chatter situation. But from here down, it's, it's pretty good. All right, let's take a reading. I'm just looking at the last digits here. So that is 21. And let's call it two tenths. 21 and two tenths. All right, come over here. Okay, I think that's got it. 21, 21 exactly. I think we're good. <laughs> I'm going to try to chase that. Um, yeah, and then I looked at the adjustment locations for this headstock. The um, jacking screws are in the back, so they're not easy to get to. Plus, they're behind the motor. you got to take the motor out. To get to one set of the jacking screws so we're not touching anything okay so what am i going to do now <laughs> well it's going to be in another video and we've got a few things we're going to be doing next week uh, so uh, it'll probably be at least another week probably a little bit longer before we can get another video out uh, but what I want to do, the, the first thing that I didn't like when we were all done is I did take a little too much off the back of the chuck when we did the, the final grinding. Um, so I'm not 100% happy with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is get this all set up again in our, in our grinding setup like we had before. Um, I do, now that we've got the, the headstock dialed in a little better with the machine perfectly level um, and, and the headstock alignment looking really good, I want to do one more uh, just a very light dust off on the back of the uh, of the uh, um, the chuck uh, uh, taper mounting surface. Get that trued up one more time, and then I want to go back in and just touch up the taper a little bit. Just uh, probably blew it up and just take the bluing off. Just a very light skim, and I think that'll put us right where we want to be. Um, the taper accuracy I think is pretty good, but since we redid the leveling of the machine, I want to just dust it off a little bit. I want to do that, test fit it again, and if all that looks good, then we're going to regrind the chuck draws. Um, we're going to leave them in the same orientation they are right now. Uh, we'll regrind them internally. Uh, we'll probably have to regrind the external steps as well, um, so it'll be a lot of work, but. I mean, we're this far down the road, why not? Let's just finish it off, do it right. So anyways, that's the plan. So um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. So that'll be happening. It's probably going to be about two weeks before we get to that. So just hang tight <laughs> and, uh, and we'll get a video out on that. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you soon.